Morning. Welcome to another episode of AVF. Say hello. Say morning. Say morning. Alright guys, bear in order, I have stuck that screen in there, because I don't need that screen, because I've got that screen. That does have all the parking sensors on and everything, it does everything that that one does anyway, so, um, don't need it. Alright, so we'll test it out. What sort of angles you got? I don't know exactly what you're looking at, and why is my head rest up? Noise the hell out of me. Who's been playing my address? Alright, we've got a trailer diagnostics to go and do first. Um, I'm not 100% sure if they like me to uh, video it, but we'll have a go. What, oh, Roxy? What are you getting upset with me for? We've only just started the day. So, wake you up. After that, it's down to Tanvix. Uh, full service on a van and some defects on it. Uh, I'm not sure if he's got two vans or one van. He rang me yesterday and just told me, reeled off a bit of a list, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, let's go, let's see how we get on. What do you reckon, Roxy? Let's get on. Alright, made it to the trailer. So noisy. So, for us to plug on this trailer, obviously we need the diagnostic brain and then the EBS, Susie, so it can read down the can lines. Take that out. Put that into there. Put that into there. And put that into there. Now we're connected. Obviously, you switch the ignition on, but as you can hear, I get completely stuck. Now nah, I can see the damn red fly set. What's that? She's in my seat again. As soon as I leave this van. Don't ya? Get out my seat. Would you rather watch this loading? Oh. Uh, we watch Roxy. Roxy, what you doing? What you doing? Now, while this is loading, uh, the reason we're plugging on this trailer is it's coming up with the accelerometer sensor playing up on it, I believe, which is basically the tilt. Um, so we're just going to have a look through. Oh, excuse me. Have a look through the configurations. Make sure everything is all programmed correctly. Make sure sensors are in the right positions. Make sure left is left and right is right. And just test it all out. It is a brand new ECU, so the chances are we haven't got no fault on that. It's going to be some sort of software issue. Um, so we'll see how we get on. Uh, and we'll go from there. Alright, program's loaded. So now we're going to trailer. We're going to trailer. Trailer. Deselect all of them, because we only want EBS. We go to Eldex third gen, because like I said, it's a new ECU, so it's going to be third gen. Then we connect. Oh, Z's on. It tells you down here. Basically, it's just telling you what different setups you can have. You can connect by USB. You can connect, obviously, Bluetooth. You can connect straight to the ECU. It's all the different connections. But we're through OBD. So. We're not for 
OBD through it. ISO. Right, we're in. So, first off, let's go straight to diagnostics. So, there you go. Defective signal in the stability sensor. Natural accelerometer. So, basically, when the trailer is going down the road, So when the trailer is going down the road and it's going around the bends or round the roundabout, as the trailer tilts, if it tilts too far, the EBS system will kick in automatically, slow down left or right wheels to make sure it stays as stable as possible. Uh, so basically, on what this is doing is going around the bends. It's trying to slow itself down, but I'd imagine it's probably breaking the wrong side, so the tilt won't actually. It's not correcting itself, so you can see that and obviously bringing the folds up. Um, I hope I'm explaining myself pretty well. I'm not very good at explaining technical details, but I do understand it in my head. Um, so that's just how we go along. Um, so yeah, so we have got that fault. So all I want to check now is, why has it gone off? Oh, there we go, parameters. Display parameters, system configuration, and then basic configuration. So as you can see here, try and get a close up of it. These are all the different positions you can have the ECU in on the trailer. And they're all categorized. You've got your letter to start with, G, H, and then you've got a number. And depending on what the trailer is, what the setup is, and where the ECU is mounted, how many sensors you got on. Here we have a diagram of the modulator in its location on the trailer. You've got category A, and then you've got pictures 1 to 12. So basically we need to look under this trailer and work out which picture is representing a location for our ECU. Um, as you can see, picture one, single axle, single axle with a reverse ECU, twin axle, again, twin axle reversed, and so on. You've got sensors on the front axle on that one, well, on the single axle on that one, twin axle there, sensors on the front, twin axle sensors on the back. All different setups, and you've got three axles here. These will be the ones we look at. Um, realistically, I would say we're going to probably be number nine because it's three axle, modulator facing forward, and you can tell that because of the it's got 22 modulator, 21 modulator, and that square box there represent the uh, ECU location. Oh, we can go large. So, what we'll do, and then you've got sensors, middle axle. Again there you've got ECU facing backwards in front of the middle axle, four sensors and then four sensors facing backwards again. So we'll go and have a look, make sure we're alright, and uh, then we'll make sure it's programmed right. So we'll jump under here. Right, I'll try and get a view for you. So, as we were saying about that picture, as you can tell, the pin is that way, behind us. So the front of the tray is behind us. So the ECU is facing forward. Um, your modulators, which is 21, 22, is basically representing them valves there. So you got 22, 21. So twin modulator. Some ECUs only have one exhaust on valves underneath, and that's single modulator. So this is a twin modulator, and then like I say, ECU location. You see the plugs on the side? That's what the empty box is representing. So this is on the left hand side of the trailer, plugged in, facing forward, and then we've got to look at the sensors. So we've got your two sensor markings here. 
Um, I haven't got my torch with me. I should have brought my torch. But above, on the casing, you're not going to be able to see it. Um, it is marked B and A for the sensors, so you can see the locations. So in our case, we are picture nine. Um, sensors, if we follow the leads, oh, here we go, sensor lead. Going down to the middle axle, first, second, third. So we're on second axle. So we'll go back to our pictures, double check we are picture nine, A. Eh? and then make sure the ECU is programmed in it and then if it is we'll make sure them sensors are in the right location oh. that's a nice van nice sticker that's a better sticker talking about stickers if any of you happen to see me, or oh, what, what was I say? Yes, yeah. If you find me, obviously you're more than welcome to come and say hello. And when I went to convoy, I had some stickers made up, and I didn't hand many out. So I've got quite a few spare. Um, I'm not one of these people that uh, out there just to profit on everything so if anybody does find me and would like a sticker you're more than welcome just to come and ask I'll be happy to see uh, anybody that's uh, from my channel because obviously I only meet people from Chris's channel which now I can say they're from my channel um, but yeah anybody come and find me or happens to see me I do have some stickers once they've gone uh, we'll see what to do next I might get the same made up I might incorporate Roxy on him I don't know yet we'll see so right anyway back to the diagnostics we're getting carried away with ourselves we're not playing with stickers all right back on here so like I said we can go for if you wanted to look at picture C. I don't know why they're into picture B, but there isn't uh, picture D. But we know these are all different modulators. Look, that's only got. It, it, it. I could go into detail, but to be honest, I forgot half of it. I have been on the courses. I am trained up on LDX. Uh, I do have certificates in EBS and everything. Um, all in house training through the various different companies um, so yeah in our case like I say we've got three axles we know we've got modulate uh, the modulator uh, twin valves at 22 and 21 we know it's plugged in on the left so we've got sensor B that should be on the right sensor A should be on the left um, so that is the picture we need so we just need to make sure we're programmed in A9 and then go from there so let's have a look next page so ECU configuration, like we said, two modulator, side control, picture A, configuration tape, nine. And that's the one we wanted. When you program an ECU, what you normally do is pull out all the old data from the old ECU, as long as it's readable, put the new ECU on it, reprogram all that info back into the new ECU, uh, check all the data on it, make sure it has moved across correctly um, and then at the very end you carry out what's an end of line test uh, basically the diagnostics goes for a full test functions and everything checks all the ECU checks to make sure it's breaking on the left breaking on the right wheel speed sensors are seen air pressure buildup is correct brakes applied are correct uh, suspension value it checks everything basically and then at the end it's a pass or a fail you get a certificate to say it's passed, or you get a certificate to say it's failed. You can print that out, give it to a customer, or do whatever you want. So um, that's the basic on that round. So yeah, on this case, like we say, we know we're programmed correctly, so we can come out of this. So there we go. So now the only thing we need to do is double check our sensor locations, which, to be honest, there we go. Sensor A should be left. 
sensor B should be right. So let's have a look. Oh no, I'll come out of it. I pressed too far. So, A left, B right. I hope I'm managing to explain myself to a certain degree of where you understand. Anybody want to ask me any questions, I'm more than welcome to ask. Whoever I answer is a different thing, but no, I will try. <laughs> right, so. Can you remember which side which? So we've got sensor A, which should be near side. Unfortunately, on this one, see if you can see it. You see in there? Ah, focus. Focus. See there, underneath that plug, sent 1A. And then on the other side, focus, sent 1B. Which, unfortunately, if we follow it, A should be to the near side, which is this way. So follow that, go around this way, down here. Oh, you weren't fast enough to follow my finger. Oh, I want to be that side. Go the wrong way around. That'll be what's causing the fault with the tilt. And this is why I brought oh, I nearly lost some screwdriver there. So all we're gonna do do a position you see my camera. Then I've got your view is I hope you can see the plug or tab just underneath push sensor in push that in out it comes. Easy as that then we get on the other side, through the hole at the bottom, push in, pull out, two sensors. So we know near side and off side. So near side wants to be A. Oh. Off side wants to be B. One it. We're not lined up to it. Right. So there we go. We now got A going to the near side, B going to the off side. All we're probably going to do is jack it up and carry out an end line test. Jack straight in the middle, as you can see, wheels an hour off the floor. So, make sure the part breaks off. Part breaks there, red buttons in. We've checked the sensors, we now know they're in the correct place. So now we're going system checks. System checks, <coughs> end of line test. What we want to do is 
check all of them. Apart from leak control. We know it hasn't got a leak, we don't need to check leak control. Uh, we don't really need to check the braking compatibility. Oh yeah, we'll leave that one on. So, there we go. Now it's a case of just do as the computer says. They're just saying, obviously, start with wheel A. We know which side wheel A is, don't we? And there we go. So, what I can do is because we're in the 21st century and we have wireless connections I can bring it with us so what should happen is we should be able to spin the near side wheel and watch can we do this on both look at, look at, look at, look at this look, ready Ooh. You see that? Go to the other side. Now asking for B. Alright, we've spun the sensors. Now we've got to spin them again. To make sure the brakes work on the correct sides. So, you see the wheel stop? Back to this side. Are you ready? Wheel stopped. So it's just checking, we've got to be over 6.5 bar in the air supply, obviously our air supply is 7.8 so we've got plenty, so next one, now I've got to press the brake pedal, <sighs> which in my case, I can just put the other airline on, because this maker vehicle parks the trailer and handbrake. Put that there. We'll go around for here. So, just put the other line back on. We have now got. Full brake pressure. Take a quick OK. Check in. Now saying release. Correct. Now let's try and sit in the van. I like sitting in the van, it's warmer. Yeah. Alright, back to the next one. Just saying release part brake, make sure the air supply is over, and now it's just doing its own brake functions. Basically, it's just putting the brakes on gently, making sure it works at different pressures depending on how much load's on the trailer with the uh, 
airbag pressure sensor. As you can see, it's building itself up. And then there's test state, correct. Just again, asking to make sure you've took the brakes off, which we haven't touched it, so of course they're still gonna be off. So on this one, it's basically just checking all the auxiliaries. So you can see it says warning lamp, correct. So basically it's flashed the warning lamp on in the dash, made sure it saw the uh, return off it, basically just checking to make sure it did light up, it can check it itself. Then you've got configuration one, two, and three. If you've got a coalass valve, lift axle, basically ride height, suspension, and all the rest of it, it'll all be programmed in here. The ECU can run through them, send the signal down, make sure the signal returns, make sure it works. Hello! Right yeah, sensor's the wrong way around. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Right, so it's carried out all its tests. Obviously passed all of them. So now here it says, the process is finished, do you wish to print the report? So if we click yes. I don't print, what I do is I just save it to PDF and then at least I've got a copy of it. So, you can set that so it goes straight to a printer if you want to. Obviously I'm mobile so I don't have printers in my van. But once it's finished this, it says it wants a graph, you can go onto that but that's for another day. So now we we'll click OK, print to PDF. OK, there we go. And now here, I'll put the trailer number in. Save, and there we go. So that's now saved. We just click back and dot. into fault menu, all good. So now we can disconnect, knowing that tray is done. And you guys are lucky you can't smell anything over this because Roxy has decided to let a bit of a uh, rear gas out and she stinks. Oh, if anybody owns a bulldog, they don't tell you about that bit, do they? Oh, bloody hell, do they stink. <laughs> right, I'll uh, get cleared up on this job. All I've got to do is drop the jack and unplug diagnostics. So I'll uh, catch you on the next job.